Jeremiah 14.14. 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither have I spake unto them. They prophesy unto you false. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their hearts. I see a lot of that on YouTube. I see a lot of self-proclaimed prophets that are prophesying things that God has showed them and that don't come to pass. Now, the false prophets, that's not really what this message is about. That'll probably be a different video. Now, We will go to Acts 16.16. 16. This one I find interesting. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Hmm. He, the spirit, came out of her. She had been following them around for a while. Speaking truth about Paul. He was there to preach about salvation. But it was hard to, for Paul to move around and do the things that he wanted to do. Like, uh, you know, Jesus had to do that. He had to, like, move into different cities at different times and stuff like that to be strategic so that he wouldn't be hindered. Paul was doing that same thing. So the Spirit wasn't lying, but was proclaim, pro, proclaiming it loudly for everybody to hear wherever they went. Paul got grieved and cast the spirit out. The interesting part is a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. Divination. What is divination? That's what this video is about. It's witchcraft. Divination is witchcraft. King James Version calls it divination. Other versions of the Bible will just simply call it witchcraft. But it is witchcraft. And there's many verses in the Bible about this subject and how serious it is. Um, it's nothing to mess around with. It, it's... If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're not affected. You're fine. You're covered by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. You're covered by the Holy Ghost.
but if you're not covered and you haven't fully committed yourself to Christ, these things can affect you. The, the biggest way that I see divination in this day and age is through psychedelics. I'm sorry, but if you're taking high doses of psychedelic mushrooms or uh, high doses of acid or pain medication or whatever, you're practicing, you know, you're practicing pharmacia, you're f practicing divination. And <laughs> ask anybody that has done psychedelics. You ever see anything weird? Oh yeah, man. I've seen some weird stuff. Um, it's popular in this day and age to use psychedelics to better yourself, better your mind. To It's like uh, I've been told it's like therapy. And a lot of people through psychedelics uh, probably thinks a lot to the Joe Rogan podcast. Now it's become popular. Sean Ryan talks about it. Veterans have had good success with it. The problem is, is when you're having these psychedelic experiences and you're seeing all these weird objects, you're seeing, you know, a deity that is helping you. And you may come off it and you might feel better. But it's never going to give you enough. It's always going to give you enough to make you come back. That's practice. That's practicing witchcraft. And, man, there's so many people that are trapped in this psychedelic experience having seen deities, what they claim is God, talking to them and that God's a woman or God's a black woman or, you know, I wanted to stay there. I didn't want to come back I did psychedelics and then I came back and then I was a non-smoker or I stopped drinking or I started working out doing all these healthy things it all seems good but it's not you're going to keep doing psychedelics and you're good I've never heard of anybody who said you know I did psychedelics twice and I Stop smoking, I stopped doing other drugs, I stopped doing alcohol, and then I never did psychedelics again. And don't have a desire to. No, they always go back, because they always want to learn more. If you take high doses of something like mushrooms, and you have a trip for hours, and you're seeing all these weird things and stuff like that, you're interested in it. What's happening is, is you're practicing witchcraft and the deity or the thing that you think is helping you, you know, your deity, your spiritual guide or whatever is not. It's a demon. Let's just call it what it is. It's you're practicing witchcraft. And it's real. And when you're opening your mind like that, you're opening a door to your mind. And you're letting in dark forces. I'm sorry if that offends people. It's in the Bible. Search the Bible front to back and find divination or witchcraft and see what it says about it. Do, do your own research. Dig into the Word. Like I say all the time. The answers are in the Bible. The, all, any question that you have, just look it up. That's your guide. That's your plumb bob. That's your ruler. That's your tape measure. 
uh, there's, I've had tons of conversations lately and I don't want to, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I love the people that I talk to this about. Um, people that I know, that I'm close with. And you're opening doors. I see people watching witchcraft on TV constantly. People listening to audiobooks or reading books about witchcraft. The discovery of witches on Netflix, that's horrible. Th those aren't good. Th you're opening doors. And then you... When you're down and out and you're praying to God and asking Him for, for Him to do all these things, when you've done nothing but watch witchcraft, listen to witchcraft, your diet is lacking, and then you come to God and be like, God, why is my life so messed up? Why is everything so messed up? It's because you're practicing witchcraft. You're opening the door for you and your family to be attacked. Or you're going out in the woods and doing psychedelics and stuff, and then on Sunday you, you're going to church. That's not... You're just opening this huge door. But I'm going to tell you right now, the weird stuff that you see, the weird creatures, the, the different colors and the atmosphere and all that stuff, you're opening the door to the demonic realm. You have no idea what you're playing with. And I, I want people to be aware of this. That the Bible talks about this. And it's nothing to play around with, man. It's not. It's so... I, I have this friend... That is, uh, he used to be a preacher. But when he was younger, he got involved in witchcraft. And he got into really dark things. I'd known him for a while before he kind of opened up about this. And uh, he was really deep. Into witchcraft and becoming a Satanist. And he goes into his apartment one night after work, and every cabinet in his house opens up in his entire kitchen. Every food item that he had in his cabinets, everything opened at once and threw, was thrown at him in the center of the room. Boom. The entire house just exploded, basically. All the doors and cabinets opened up, ejected all of the food right toward him. He said, I was terrified. I thought I was in control. I thought that I was doing stuff that, you know, this is power seeking. It's just power seeking. And uh, it was, you know, a few days or whatever later, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was a few days later he gave his life to Christ and became a preacher. But he doesn't talk about that stuff a lot because he doesn't want to glorify the enemy, which is fine. I, I agree with that. But you're not talking to a deity. You're not talking to an angel. You are, but they're a fallen angel. They're going to give you just enough. The, it, it just boggles my mind that you could take psychedelics and kind of believe in evolution. You could take psychedelics and then watch documentaries and start to believe in aliens and all this stuff. And there's a book that is the number one selling book of all time. The Bible. This one they don't make anymore, I believe. They just started recently making it again. The King James Study Bible. I love this Bible. <laughs> it's just crazy. You can watch one documentary on one night 
and believe everything that it says by some scientist on there. Or read like, you know, scientific journals or whatever. And you're just like, well, this is, that, that makes so much sense, man. The aliens built the pyramids, bro. The aliens did it. We can't do it today. <laughs> but God is out of your realm. You don't you can't believe in God, but you can believe in everything that men that are fallible tell you. How many people put on a mask? I still see people driving in cars by themselves wearing masks by themselves. Stop doing psychedelics. Stop trying to fix everything yourself. There's people out there that are suffering. They're depressed. They're lonely. They're overlooked. Or they have everything and they're still depressed. And they think that there's something wrong with them. What's your diet? What spirit is standing over your shoulder? Because every single person on the planet has either a good spirit hanging around them or a bad one. And, you know, a lot of the time you have I don't know. There's people that I care about out there that are into psychedelics. And you can't really... It's hard to have a really good conversation with them about it. Because they don't want to hear what you have to say. They don't want to hear what you have to say because when you speak, they, they feel conviction. And they've associated their identity with how they feel about the thing that they're talking about. And so it's really hard to reach them. And I just pray that God will send somebody, another person, or multiple people, or whatever, and reach them and pull them out of that. But... The more oppressed we are, the more depressed we are, the more that people are going to start reaching out. Reach out for the good thing that never fails. The Holy Word of God, perfect and true. It's easier to pick this up and study it than it is to stuff your face full of mushrooms, have your mind float out in outer space, <laughs> And talk to demons. Because that's what you're doing. Ask me how I know. Ask me. When I was a sinner, I did mushrooms. I never did a lot. I did it a few times. And... I didn't take enough to see anything weird or anything like that, but I know that I wanted, I want, yeah, I kind of wanted to keep doing it. I, I took mushrooms a couple times. Uh, once I took it before going to a Catholic church and said some things out loud that I thought were thoughts. And, it, you know, a lot of people think that that's a funny story, but I had no idea that I was practicing witchcraft. It, you are. I, I opened the doors. I opened the doors to my home. I opened the doors to my mind. And uh, I repented of that. And now I don't even remember the last time I've had a drop of alcohol. And uh, I'm not trying to glorify myself. I'm just saying that I prayed a lot and now I don't even feel... I don't even have like a... 
a craving for alcohol anymore. But, yeah, there's tons of people who do DMT. And their mind's projected somewhere else. So you do the drug, your mind is opened, and then the enemy comes in. And he can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants to your mind. He can make you believe that that you're not even who you think you are. That you're an alien. And you're from a different planet. And I know it sounds funny, but I've had people tell me that. And they believe it wholeheartedly. It's turned into a long video. There's a lot more scriptures I wanted to get to read. But I think I'll list all of the scriptures where it talks about divination. Divination? I have a hard time even saying that. <laughs> scriptures, uh, verses about witchcraft. And I'll link them into the... I'll list them out in the description. But I know it's been a while. This is an important subject. It'll probably end up being another video at some point. Pray deeply for the people that you know that are into these things. I love you. And I pray that everybody that watches this gets something out of it. And do me a favor. One simple thing. Just hit the thumbs up button so I can reach more people. My goal is not to glorify myself. My goal is not to even hear myself talk. My goal is to reach as many people around the world about Jesus Christ before He comes back that I can. But I need your help. 